Hey everyone, welcome to the Open Source Founder Podcast. Joining me today is Glauber, founder of Turso. Thank you so much for joining us, Glauber. I'm super excited it's to hear about your background and all the journey that led to the creation of Turso today. Oh man, it's my pleasure. Super good to be here. Thank you. Uh, so how did the, what was your life before uh, this project looking like? And then what was the impetus that led to the creation? My life, yeah. <laughs> should, should, I, should I start from the beginning, or do you want to know like my life immediately before? Whatever you would like uh, to share. <laughs> both, both are, yeah, both are interesting uh, talk points, I guess. But uh, I, I wasn't really uh, in the beginning of my career. I wasn't really that interested in in, in startups. It's just not something. Uh, I think I had some interest. I mean, some interest in like companies and and etc. But by and large. Uh, and keep in mind that this was before the crisis. I, I'm, I'm old. I mean, I shave so you, you can't see, you know, the gray hair. But like, a, this was before the year 2000. So like, I, I was in school around the year 2000. Uh, so before the uh, 2001 uh, crash, which we now seen a lot of the, you know, the same things and <laughs> and and a lot of that. But like, uh, I, I was uh, in school and. Uh, I, in fact, I was not even going to school for computer science. I was doing something else. Uh, I eventually later gave up, changed, and graduated in computer science. Uh, but I, I just took a, a, a liking to open source. I mean, I, I you know, just uh, initially, I mean, I was a young guy. Initially, was mostly just out of like an ideological position, uh, <laughs> which you know, just uh, it's uh, it's a lot softer these days. I mean, you know, just that that itself, I think, it's a podcast. Uh, <laughs> That we can talk mm -hmm. exclusively about that, uh, but also on on the technical level, I took a liking. Um, uh, I I took a liking to the Linux kernel. So I still remember, for example, one of the things that I when I was in this mental process of like, do I switch uh, courses or you know or, or mm -hmm. not? Like, a, I, I I was looking at the computer science program and they had a couple of courses on our computer architecture. Uh, like assembly programming, and I decided, hey, look, just uh, let me see, and I'll, I'll take a course, no, no credits, I just sit there and, and, and see. Uh, and and then like I, I was using Linux because of the whole thing about like open source. So I, you know, none of us wanted to use Windows at the time. Um, and and man, it was just fascinating that this super low level stuff that most people do not know uh, mm. was just there in the kernel in front of me for me to for me to check i mean like uh so, so i started uh, taking a liking and and i think that was around 2003 i started like uh putting more and more time into now let me just go look in the kernel and reading books and and etc and i think around 2004 i sent my first uh, open source contribution to the linux kernel wow. uh later a little bit later i was hired by red hat so that's how my career actually started uh, and again, this is already super cool because I was not done with school. I mean, I was still two years away, especially because of my switch, uh, you know, got a little bit late, late with that. Uh, but I was working for Red Hat, to, you know, just, to, uh, and trying my best to, <laughs> to finish my, my, uh, in my studies, uh, which I did. So, I mean, I, in the, the beginning was this for me, I mean, just super, uh, my, my goal was like, how do I become as best uh, uh, as I can as, as a programmer, uh, which I believe I mostly failed, <laughs> but just in in some sense. I mean, but like, how, how do I get to like the upper echelons of of this? Uh, and I and I just did this for ten years. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't like a, I wasn't I didn't really have like and, and come to think about it, like it's a terrible way to if you if you want to go do startups, it's a terrible way to start uh, because like. A, Lots of the technical work in startups are not at that level. I mean, they're like, uh, I think it would have been a lot, uh, uh, you know, if startups were my goal, uh, I would have been a lot better served by like, go at the time, like the, the big thing that everybody was talking about was the rise of mobile, right? So just to go look into that. I never wrote a mobile application in my life. I have no idea uh, how to even write like a competent backend application, let alone front end. Uh, and again, if I, if I wanted to go in that direction, like a building a company, maybe those were things that were, you know, I would be better off, but that's not what I like to do. Uh, my, my passion was always like, hey, like a super low level, and, and you know, go, go. Let me see what this this thing is doing under the hood. Um, and and at Red Hat, Red Hat bought a company, uh, mm -hmm. and that company was the company that was uh, uh, producing the KVM hypervisor, which at the time, at the time, just to contextualize uh, some of your listeners, 
the big thing at the edge uh, of, of the, the industry was the rise of cloud computing, which everybody takes for granted today. Uh, but at the time, it was something new. And, 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 and the technology trend powering this was the rise of virtualization. So we had VMware as a company starting to do this. Uh, but then uh, Zen popped up as an open source company. Uh, and again, KVM shortly after. Red Hat acquired the company. So I, I came to be very good friends uh, with the people uh, that were uh, doing that company. A uh, couple of folks uh, out of Israel. Again, they worked with us uh, in inside Red Hat uh, after the acquisition for a couple of years. And and then in 2013, I joined their startup uh, mm -hmm. as employee number three. So that was my first uh, experience as like a startup person. I stayed with them for almost eight years. So my career doesn't have a lot of uh, a lot of people today do that one year here, two years there, like interviewing all the time, uh, which again has the, some benefits, I think, especially financially. Uh, you know, just, I, I didn't get a lot of that upside. Uh, but in terms of like deep focus and like really learning something truly well, I mean, I think you know what I did uh, works. Uh, to some degree, which is like you need, you really need like to commit to something and do that something for for a long time, uh, and and that was a data that was a that was not initially a database company, but it pivoted into a database company. So I already saw like the the, the pains of like oh you know what do you do when your product is not working? Uh, so we pivoted into a database company uh, called later renamed Scylla, uh, and that's again that's where I stayed for for almost eight years. Uh, my co-founder was also in the Linux kernel with me. He joined mm -hmm. Scylla as employee number four, uh, right after me, uh, and he also stayed there for uh, 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 for for around eight years. And after that, we could just after I had a very short uh, transition, in which I uh, that was the beginning of COVID and etc. So I joined Datadog, where I intended to stay for much longer, uh, but having you know money was so easy. I did not again, and it's funny because I did not know that. For me, it was just like I, it was, that was my first foray. So for me, mm -hmm. it was just like the way things were. The money was so easy that I had a couple of investors. Uh, uh, we had nothing. We had we essentially like it was my co-founder and I just wanted to start a company, uh, and and we had investors already like ready to invest. Uh, again, we did have a reputation and all, but we didn't have a product or, or anything like that. Uh, and despite again, despite my intention being staying at Datadog for a lot longer, uh, I just saw the opportunity. The money was there, and I said, "Hey, look, let let's do it." And here we are. Thanks so much for sharing uh, all this information about your background. And it's a, it's a unique background. And you're right. Nowadays, a lot of people just jump uh, between different companies. Well, not just nowadays. I mean, back back then, too. I mean, the, the people who were chasing just the career part of it and the money part of it, like, a, uh, and not necessarily the subject. Potentially, mm -hmm. I think the best strategy is to jump around. Right? Just, I'm not saying that my strategy was optimal. It definitely wasn't from the financial point of view. Uh, and but, while, but, you know, while you were there, um, like these these last these, these eight years, uh, but Silo, mm -hmm. were you considering sort of like, oh, in the future, I would like to uh, strike my own path, become an entrepreneur, um, and and then all the way to actually, you know, making that transition? The, was it a problem that you faced on the job? Was it the excitement with the technology aspect that led you to uh, the creation of? Oh yeah, so yeah. I I always I always wanted, uh, and so. Uh, even at Scylla, when Scylla started, uh, again, I, I don't think it was, here's the thing. I'm the kind of person that I want lots of things. Uh, uh, even even like when I started in the Linux kernel, I was very interested at the Linux kernel, but it wasn't the only thing I was interested at. Uh, I was I, I had like a, maybe narrowing today, but especially as a, 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 my younger self, I was interested in many things uh, at the same time. So there was always some level of opportunity cost for me that I was, oh, what mm -hmm. about this? Someday I would like to do this. Some, I love compilers, by the way. So I wanted to work a little bit in compilers as well, which I, which I never did. Uh, but I always had this sense of like, oh, I could be doing something else. And one of the things that I that I kept thinking, hey, one day I would like to do uh, was uh, get my own company. Uh, so at Seal, I tried my best to to get as close as, as, as that as possible, uh, get their first customer. I said, look, uh, F this, I don't want to code anymore. I mean, I, although I kept coding, but I said, I don't want this to be my main function. I want to go and try to win this, help you win this customer. And like, a, and then the marketing folks would love me because they wanted all this collateral to talk about the product. And I wanted, and, and I said, hey, awesome. Let me write some content. And like, and then the salespeople love me because, uh, you know, they were having problems closing a deal and, and the, the, the buyer of databases are very technical. You know, that was true at Scylla as well. 
Uh, it was very hard to get an engineer on the phone, but I was happy to do it. I was actually annoyed when I wasn't called. Uh, <laughs> and, and the CEO is like, dude, no, you cannot go in all of those calls. Uh, you know, you have to protect your time. Your time is very valuable to us. I mean, those this, those salespeople, they see you willing to help, they abuse you. And I said, but for me, it was a learning experience. I loved it, right? Just I, I wanted I wanted to do that. So, so uh, we actually fought because I wanted to do more of that. Uh, and, and, you know, just uh, so, so I wanted that experience. I wanted to see how it was going to be. Uh, but my original plan was to stay like for four years at Datadog, put my life in order because, dude, I, between us, I never made money in my life, right? Just uh, that, that's the thing. And, uh, and joining a public company uh, at the time, uh, you know, at Red Hat, I, I had no shares because my, uh, when I joined him, it was super young and et cetera. Like I wasn't, all I wanted. Like I was still hacking the Linux kernel. That's all I wanted. That's it. Just uh, and again, at Scylla, Scylla is still not a uh, didn't have an exit. Uh, you know, just mm -hmm. uh, and it's going to become even more challenging now with with the uh, current environment. Uh, so again, I I I I was always making like a fair amount of money for like as as any technologist will will do, but never like anything like life you know, life changing. So a uh, data dog for me was you know especially I have three kids now. I had one at the time, but it was my time to like put the house in order. But man, when you got the bug, you got the bug. I mean, I said, I saw, I saw, I saw the opportunity, uh, and then one year later, I was already out. So I had one year in my life in which I made money. That that's it. <laughs> so well, well, thanks so much for being transparent about this, and you know, not many people say it outright. Yeah, but, uh, uh, lots of people don't know. Like they think, oh, you know, just uh, go go fight. But the, the thing is, like, a your your cash compensation at big tech and. Look, startup is going to be a little bit uh, lower. So my my take home pay today is uh, as the CEO uh, of of the company is lower than than at Datadog, right? Uh, but it's it's actually not that much lower. It, it's actually lower than the, even Scylla, but it's not that much lower. So it's a little bit lower uh, than than what I was making at Scylla uh, as, as an employee. Uh, so get, if you if your listeners are thinking about starting a startup, that is the first thing you need to know. Like uh, your your cash compensation will decrease. Um, but that's not the worst part because if you are working for a public company like Datadog was, and again that that is a part of the reason why I joined, uh, you have stock at the company, which you, again you also do at a startup. But startup stock is very illiquid, mm -hmm. uh, which was which was why most founders don't talk about themselves as being poor. Uh, I'm not poor. I am illiquid, right? Uh, illiquid is just a person who is very rich on paper. <laughs> so, so, so startup stock is like this. I mean, it's just, a, it's, it's worth some dollar amount, but you can't touch it. Uh, and the valuation is mostly horse crap because, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it could be worth 10 times actually more than that in the future. Or it could be worth zero or maybe you'll never exit. So, so it's just, a, but like, if you go work for a company like Datadog, uh, you, you go check the ticker today and, and I can tell you the price. So that's it. I mean, in every quarter you, you get that money, uh, right? Uh, so like uh, it was very refreshing uh, and I had all the, and also, I mean, it was not just the money, but I think the money after, you know, 20 years was a uh, 20 years of like getting better as an engineer, but not uh, making money. Um, the, my original plan was to, hey, the four years that I can pay off my house. I don't live in that, that expensive location anyway. I put my life in order. Uh, but but you know the 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 difference as I was saying between Scylla and today is is not that high. It's, it's like a, a delta. But if you count the difference between like that year that I had a data dog uh, and now, it's ridiculous. Like it's it's a uh, especially because a stock in twenty twenty had only one direction it would go <laughs> right <laughs> up. So so you sign you sign your contract and then one year later you're already making like a ridiculous amount of money compared to you even thought you were going to make when you signed the contract. Uh, the silver lining is that I don't think I will be making that much money today because then Datadog lost half its value. Uh, but look, man, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it, it is the life. Uh, in, in, in many ways, I think I'm better now because I had a life experience that I wanted and I would not mm -hmm. have had uh, at the public company. So it's all about like uh, the experience versus the, it, it's, it, it, you can't look at one factor, but it is a reality. It is a reality that you, you're leaving a lot on the table uh, if, if you come this route, right? But I think this is helpful for people to hear, uh, especially thinking about starting a company. And so I, I appreciate uh, laying it out for people. Now for the engineers, for the technology crowd, uh, you know, transitioning the topic, maybe you could tell us about Tusho, what it is, and then what yep. 2023 looked like in 
terms of the traction of the project, the development, um, and then we'll get you know, more into what's what's coming up next. Yeah. Uh, so you also asked me a question in the beginning, like why did you start this company and etc. Again, yes. I talked about how why I started a company, uh, but but the thing is that like uh, the the company was also not doing Turso in the beginning. So like we did not start Turso. We started something else. Back and I started something else. Uh, and it's funny because if you would ask them, uh, if you have asked me when I joined Scylla, join a database company, my answer will probably have been no. Why would mm-hmm. I do that? Sounds stupid. Uh, but then after eight years at a database company, I told Pekka, hey, Pekka, let's start a company. What do you want to do? Like, how about we do anything but a database company? Uh, because, again, why would we do, why would we be so sadistic? And, you know, if you're masochistic, if you know, talk about yourself, to start another database company. So that's not what we did. Uh, the thing is, man, just uh, again, uh, fate is fate, life is life. And uh, we we released a, in October or November, 2022, we, we, we had our previous product. And then we released in the context of that product, like we were using SQLite, uh, we were using SQLite a lot. And in the context of that product, we released a fork of SQLite. And, mm-hmm. and it, this is all on our website for you to read. I mean, our reasoning, our motivation, and et cetera. Again, happy to expand on that, but just to keep the, the, the flow of the story going, we put this fork out. Mm-hmm. Uh, in five days, we had 50% more GitHub stars on that fork than we had in, into our product that we were building for a year. Uh, but that's not all. That fork had no code. Uh, our or, or originally, and we were we were lambasted on Hacker News because of that, but it was a conscious decision. Like again, we strategically decided to do that. And I, I th- and in hindsight, I think it was the right decision. Obviously, like uh, it could have been the wrong decision, as with any decision. But we decided to announce the fork of SQL. I put the repository out there, but not write a single line of code. All we did was we put a readme with our intentions, like this is why we did it. Uh, we put the manifesto out. We put like a, a license because SQLite has no license. It's something that lots of people d- do not know. Uh, a code of conduct and et cetera. And they said, hey, we want to build a community with this. This is why we're doing this. Come build with us. Uh, and then again, the reaction for a lot of people in Hacker News uh, was like, hey, look, I mean, who are those guys? Why are they doing this? I mean, right. talk That's is really cheap. Like a, yeah. Uh, yeah, where's, where's the code? Yeah. I mean, you're just, uh-huh. you're just clowning around. Where's the code? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, it was funny because somebody said, I trust the SQLite guy a lot more than a random stranger on the internet. And then uh, this dude that worked for me, uh, worked with me at Red Hat, came to my defense and said, hey, look, Glover's not a random. I mean, look, look at the guy. I mean, just uh, he, he's done this and this and this and that. Uh, but like from from the point of view of like the usual uh, you know arbitrary hacker news person, just a rando saying a bunch of stuff. <laughs> like, but but where's the code? Again, we did this very. Uh, it was very uh, strategic that, that that we wanted to do this this way. Because um, uh, what was the core idea behind this strategy? Was it just see if people want to be part of this new journey. Uh, no, because we understood that like, um, we so we we had the discussion for, first of all. We knew that the reality, I mean, in other situations, the reality is different. Like if we were just, uh, if we had this as a project, as a conceptual, purely open source project at home, or as a side gig, it would have been a different story. Mm-hmm. But we knew that for better or worse, this was in the context of our business. Yes. Uh, we did not have the necessarily the intention to pivot, but this was a business decision, like forking this or something that said, we're going to do this because it makes sense for us to do. Uh, obviously, we knew that it could happen that it would catch fire as it did, but we were not necessarily like expecting. Like we, we knew there were scenarios in, in which this would not happen, right? Just uh, um, and so one of the things we wanted to fix with SQLite was this idea that like open source but not open contribution. Like there was a lot of chatter online about hey, SQLite could have, could be so much more if only did this, 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 mm-hmm. and that. Uh, so we wanted to 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 fix that social problem first and foremost, uh, you know, fix it in in the open source way, which is like you don't like it, fork it, which is what people say. Uh, like, and and we don't have access to this community, so we will do what, what was done before and like uh, succeed or not. That that's our attempt. But our so there were two considerations. One of them is that we do not want to take two years to put this out because if you take 
to if, if we were to code all the things we wanted, it would take a year, two years, right? Uh, and then we would present to the world this fork of SQLite that does all of the kind of stuff. But one year later, two years later, and then and then what? And then we run out of money. The company doesn't exist anymore. Like I just, especially because we were already doing a product for a a full year. Uh, but but the other the other reason is that we knew that that. Okay, because another path is that you can say, what is the most impactful thing we want to do? And then you do that most impactful thing kind of willy-nilly, not necessarily to the end, but then you use that to show what you came for. But our fear is that we would start then to be known as the people that are doing SQLite plus that, whatever that will be, right? Oh, you know, we, we had this, this uh, we run this uh, internally and in like those simulation scenarios with ourselves. And you could easily see people chatting about us. Hey, have you seen the guys who've done SQLite plus HTTP? Or like, have you seen the guys who've done SQLite? You know, just this technical thing that you do becomes the center. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so we decided not to write any code so that there wouldn't be a center for the conversation. The conversation would be around the the, the license and the community and those aspects. Uh, which I kind of worked because a couple of weeks later, people were referring to us uh, on Twitter as the fork of SQLite. And that's exactly what we wanted. Uh, like so it paid off. Uh, yeah. but, but we again, we uh, it's risky because uh, we had to start producing code like, uh, very soon. Uh, and, and and we had this initial uh, flow, uh, you know, wave of reaction of people just saying, hey, you know, those guys are just, uh, who are they? But it's also not that bad because every time you have people, every time you have people doubting you uh, and then you can quickly prove that, hey, you know, it is for real, it's great. It's the best way to 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 create believers. Uh, we had we had that at Scylla as well. Scylla had some very outrageous claims that oh, we are ten times faster than Apache Cassandra, which was the time the competition that we had. Uh, and every time somebody called us on it and say I don't believe you, and it's a, that, that's an outrageous claim, and that was great because they would run it and it would be true. Uh, and then at that point you become a true believer, right? When you, when you, when you had the originally the doubt. Uh, so it's 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 all good. I mean it, it worked well. Uh, and then, and then, like a, because we saw so much interest uh, in such a short period of time, uh, we decided uh, around end of November to just kill the previous product. Like end of November uh, and early December 2022. This is all fuzzy to me uh, because <laughs> that I, I was having my my third uh, kid at the time, so just to spend some time in the hospital, etc. So the, the timelines are a little bit fuzzy. Uh, but around December 2022, we just decided, hey, look, I mean, out with this. Uh, uh, and and we we didn't even fully stop working on the previous product. We kept a little bit because uh, we had this idea that okay, just a fork of SQLite is not a business. <laughs> so do we have a business here? So we worked for like another two months, uh, and then in February we decided to launch the private beta of Turso. And then seeing the reaction to that, we said okay, that's a business. Uh, you know, obviously not at that point, but like this can become a business. Uh, so now, you know, kill the previous thing, do the new thing, and that's it, right? So that, that we had this transition period. And the idea came during that period, sort of like November, December 22 to February 23, or you were already kind of like thinking about, okay, what else can we build? But uh... Yeah, no, pretty, pretty much, yeah, pretty much. Because, uh, again, we saw, I think, obviously, again, our previous product was also based on SQLite. Uh, and so we had some exposure to that. And I, I actually think that Turso, initially the way it was, was very informed, for better or worse, by the things we were doing right before. So we were trying to essentially was a global state management API for edge compute, right? Uh, and and I think the reason uh, the and and we wanted to use SQLite for that because we knew that SQLite would, if done correctly, would replicate very well. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and what I mean by very well is that it, it, it's very cheap to to run a set of like 10 replicas or, or, or anything like that. And in the beginning, I think we focused a lot on Edge. Uh, today, we focus a lot less on Edge. Uh, and happy to, to, to share why. Because after after a couple of months uh, that we were like public beta and, and, and the, the product that was released and people were using, we started noticing that 70%, 70 percent, seven zero, seventy percent of the people who were creating databases on Turso did not create a single replica. Mm. Uh, and 
there are two reasons for that. First of all, is that I particularly think that the, the word edge was a little bit butchered by Vercel, Colfer, and others. Uh, the JavaScript community, uh, and I was not a part of that community originally, nor do I consider myself a part of this community today, but like uh, it is a community that we serve uh, a, a lot. Uh, lots of people in that community have a very twisted understanding of what edge means. And then you hear things like, I don't like to use edge because it's not compatible with Node.js. And then I say, look, edge is for me a geographical statement, it has nothing to do with, with any runtime. But again, because of, of specific technology and go-to-market decisions that those companies had, I think mostly for sale in all fairness, uh, people start associating edge with certain restrictions that have nothing to do with the replication thing. So people sometimes would come to Turso looking for an edge database but they would still not create replicas because they didn't associate edge with replication. They associated edge with uh, HTTP instead of TCP for database connections and no need for connection pooling and, and code starts and serverless and, 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 and things like that, which are accidentally edge uh, or you know not edge at all, if you ask me. Uh, but also because we started noticing that a lot of people just wanted a way to run SQLite in the cloud, right? Just a, a, a lot of those other 70%, they were very interested in our product. And we know that because then we started asking them, okay, so you did not create any replica. Why are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> like what's, yeah. what brings you yeah. here, right? You invest this in the best way possible, but what brings you here? Uh, and then you would, you would hear things that have nothing to do with like, oh, because I want to run this in six regions or 10 regions or, or anything like that, right? Uh, so, so over time, again, we expanded uh, the scope of what we do. But I think the reason we started focusing so much on edge is because that was already what we were trying to do, right? So so uh, it, it kind of informs you, uh, again, it, it, we did not start with a clean slate. Uh, and maybe we should have. We should have spent more time just thinking, but it's hard as humans to, you know, just, uh, it's, it's very hard to do this. You you always get, uh, you, you always get, I think, a little bit informed by your context, by your surroundings, and and and, and your short-term history. So that's how we ended up. This uh, again. So to, today, I think uh, I don't even talk anymore about Edge database. Uh, uh, Turso does replication very well, and it's still one of the things that we do. But the word Edge is just quite problematic. So just don't talk about it. And 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 the product, I mean, does a lot more other things than than just that today. <laughs> and then, no, I, I understand that these things have been conflated. And so what is the best way to actually describe to people today what Turso is and where it's going now in 2024? SQL item production is the best way. So when you, when you go look in, uh, when you go look in, in uh, my co-founder actually likes SQL item for modern apps. But it's, it's one of those phrases that uh, it, it's used so much that it kind of loses its uniqueness. It's not wrong, but I just don't, you know, don't talk too much like that because of this, because it's a, a overused trope. But there's a lot of people understanding and realizing that the time for SQLite has come for a variety of reasons. And, and, and I think the reason number one is that machines are so powerful today, uh, but the workloads are, didn't grow that much. So like I and remember, I come from this background at Scylla where we're talking about petabytes of data and billions of queries a second and, and et cetera. Uh, but when you go talk to most companies, like if they have a lot of, they, they, they will say, can Turso handle my data? I have a lot of data. How much data do you have? Like I have like hundreds of gigabytes. It's not, there's not a lot of data. Object, I mean, it was, it was a lot of data 10 years ago. Now it's not. Objectively, it's not a lot of data. How much do you need to, and, and them say, oh, I've heard SQLite is not great for writes. We hear this all the time. I heard SQLite is not great for writes. Can you handle my workload? My, my workload is write heavy. Oh, awesome. Uh, tell me more. Like, let's put this in numbers. I write to the database almost every second. So again, this is not write heavy. Like the, the, the write heavy workloads, the, the, the real write heavy workloads, if you make that statement as, a, as an industry-wide statement, stuff like we did at Scylla, or log ingesting or anything like that, you're writing to the database hundreds of millions per second, uh, <laughs> right? Just, uh, so, so if you're writing to the database every second, Jesus. it's yeah. not heavy writes. So yeah, you're right, SQLite is not good for heavy writes, but like we're talking about the fringe of the industry heavy writes. We're not talking about the center of, of, of the spectrum heavy writes, right? So SQLite is good for a variety of use cases today. And it's extremely easy 
Uh, it's probably the best developer experience you've ever had because you can start with just a file uh, and it's extremely fast. Uh, and because it, because of that, it, 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 can, it can offer you a service that is, we can offer you a service that is extremely cheap because of those things put together. So there are many advantages of using SQL as your main database, but again, using SQL in production is super hard because it's just a file. So what do you do if you want to uh, have another API server calling to the same database? If it's just a file, right? What do you do? Uh, so there, there are many situations. What do you do if you want to do backups? What if you do? What, what do you do if you want to scale this out? What, what about fault tolerance if, if your API server dies? What if you are using? What if your application is serverless? Where do you put the damn file, right? Uh, so what we want to do is like plug the gap of those things. And again, we're doing this through the fork that we have. What are the things that you can do? to now make sure that SQLite can be your main database, can be used for production, for your serious applications, like for the stuff that really moves the needle. We believe that the answer is yes. Uh, it can be used for that. And we, we are the company that want to make it happen, right? Uh, so again, just to add just one thing, one of the things that I think we can do very well, but there are others. Uh, and look, the, the, if you go to the, our pricing page, you would see that in our... Uh, our most basic plan, which is today the only one we have, but we're going to have others in, in the future. Uh, for $29 a month, you can create 10,000 databases. There's no other provider that can offer anything like that. And, and you can only do this because of SQLite, because every database is just a file. Uh, there is no gigabyte granularity of, of creating databases. There's nothing of the sort. So you go and just... Uh, Want to have a database of ten kilobytes? Have a database of ten kilobytes, and then if if you want to have thousands of them, you have thousands of them. That, that, that's all fine, right? And every, again, if those databases are not being used, they don't consume any resources because you don't have like a database server running. We have like the one server serving all of those databases, uh, so you can create an offering that is very compelling. Uh, I think for for a lot of users uh, because of that. So th this is what we're trying to do. Uh, and in 2024, I think we're going to do more of that. I mean, just uh, it's uh, we haven't we haven't reached yet the point where uh, we're monetizing this very aggressively. Uh, so, I mean, as a company, we do need to survive. We, we do need to find uh, that path to monetization. Uh, and 2024 is the year in which I expect this to happen. Right? Just I expect us to being able to handle more and more critical. The database market, the good thing about the database market is that it's very hard, very competitive. Mm -hmm very cutthroat, but very easy to understand. If you power a mission critical workload, you make money. That's it, boom, it, 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 it's simple, right? Uh, so that's uh, that's where we're heading hopefully this year. I love it. And your work personally, uh, I remember from your previous startup experience, you love you know being customer facing and doing sales, you know, doing you know, writing content, help the market, the business, and you know, bring new paying customers in. So uh, how has, and that's a that's an edge. That's a superpower for a, for a founder for a CEO to have. Uh, yeah. What does that look like today? Do you get as much time as you would like to on this sort of like activity business function? Yeah. And yeah. So so the only thing I don't do anymore compared to uh, to my previous life is code, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it's funny because like lots of lots of founders keep coding. Uh, I, again, I had still a code still coded a lot. Um, but I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm older today. I've got my family, my kids. I don't have that much like time outside of uh, you know the, the business hours to 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 be doing this. Again, yeah. But I, in the, if you go if you go look into the repositories that we have that are open source, you will see my name on it. <laughs> but you will also notice that over time it drops precipitously, uh, because what I and it's funny because I had this this thinking, you know, when it was conceptualizing one day I'm going to have my company. Will I code or not? And, and at Chisel Strike, uh, our, our previous product, uh, uh, I still coded a fair, a fair amount. And again, we were a small team and et cetera. I kept thinking, look, the, why would I not do this? Because I'm, I can not code and the company is not that big. So this idea that, look, this person is not going to code at all if you are a 10-person team, uh, Immediately, what you're saying is that you're losing 10% of your <laughs> of your coding power. So why would you not do this, right? Uh, but as Truso started uh, gaining muscle, first of all, the the amount of work that I have to do increases. Uh, uh, as as just one example, we're pursuing SOC two certification now. Mm -hmm. uh, so the engineers do have to get involved to make sure that everything's compliant. But a lot of the work, man, is just like a 
reading stuff, creating agreements, uh, signing papers. There's a lot of work that I don't want my engineers to do, so I'll do it. I'm happy to do it. Uh, there is a lot of this kind of work of like talking to people, uh, coming into a great podcast like yours to talk about the product, which is a marketing activity uh, for me at the end of the day. There is an there is activity of going on LinkedIn and and doing something I always hated doing, like which is just cold calling people. Uh, you try to you try to at least do a warm call, but it, you know just to talk to people, you, you get people to POC the product. You, so there's a lot of that, but but also I started noticing that at some point, and it was very visible, like it was almost like physically visible, I was doing more harm than good every time I coded. Because you don't have the context. Like uh, it, it, you become like a, essentially a, uh, look, uh, yes, the other day I found something, an error message with the right word, I, I fixed it, right? But if you do any any serious code, like you need context. You need to, coding is like you need to sit down and you need to understand what you're doing and you need to understand the product. And and I don't have this kind of time anymore because I have like 30 minutes here, one hour there. So mm. you can do more damage with that than, than, than you can help because like in 30 minutes, you're, just, you're not going to even have like a uh, – and then I have no time for two weeks. And by those two weeks, a lot of things have changed. And so I just uh, kind of decided – that uh, I was almost always better off at this point asking people from from my team and making them know that I consider that a priority, right? Hey, uh, and why? Uh, we I, I wanted to do this. This is the reason. I don't have the time to do it. Can you do it? Uh, then coding this myself. So this is the only thing uh, I think I, I, I don't do anymore. Uh, and again, I, I don't have any free time <laughs> because of, of family. So I just don't code at all. Uh, which is a shame, but but the other the other kind the other part of the work yeah absolutely we do a lot of that. That's great, and and of course you know the the team internal and broad has has expanded to help with the distribution and, mm -hmm. and sort of like marketing motion. And for that, I know that you've had a very successful partnership so far with the Prime Gen, and you're mm -hmm. planning to uh, help him fly to Brazil. In we the will next yes. So uh, the, the, the day, I wish I had the final dates, uh, but I don't. We're, uh, we're about to close the venue. So when we close the venue, like we have the tentative date, which is May the 11th. Uh, but again, we need to also find a venue that's going to be available on May the 11th. And, and we haven't closed it yet. There, there, there are some. Uh, but but uh, yeah, I mean, that, that, was a, that was a little bit like, that's how you end up doing things in startups. I mean, you don't plan that much. I mean, you see an opportunity to say, hey, let, let's, what if? <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, so we, we, uh, I noticed uh, I was actually born in Brazil, uh, although again, I'm not in Brazil for many years. It's going to be more than 15 years, uh, actually, probably this year. Uh, and, and I don't have a lot of context still in, in, in the country. Like I don't, I don't go much. Uh, so just, uh, but you know, just, uh, I still, I, I still know it. <laughs> Uh, and and I know a lot of things about the the country, so I think I understand uh, the culture, I understand the things that people value to some extent. And and I saw that like uh, every time the Primogen would mention Brazil in his stream, people would go crazy, say, "Hey, come to Brazil, come to Brazil, come to Brazil. We would love to have you here." Uh, and and again, I've developed as you as you mentioned like a very good relationship with him. Uh, uh, he talked about us on stream many times. And then one day he put a tweet out that just said just had the word Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> and this is like the 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 most uh, that guy's a genius, man. Like this is just a uh, it takes it to the next level. Like this thing about engagement, just put the word out there. And then he had one hundred and sixty thousand views. At that <laughs> moment, I said, "Not nah, like I, I asked him, look, if if I if I find a way for you to go to Brazil, can, you want to go? Do you want to come?" And initially, he was a bit resistant, but I think at with with time over time, he saw like how cool this could be. Uh, so, so we decided. We, as soon as he gave me the okay, we said, "Yeah, let, let's just do it." So we don't, we don't have uh, again. I don't have any presence in Brazil, uh, and and I don't have any contacts, uh, any good contacts that could make it happen. So we partner with one of our customers that is from Brazil, which is a company we like a lot uh, called Asion. Uh, what they 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 do amazing work. They do a lot of like uh, edge compute as well, the real stuff edge compute. Uh, you can feel, like so they have a compute platform like Cloudflare workers, uh, like the stuff that Akamai has. Uh, and I, I think it, uh, you as the listener should just go and try. 
Uh, and, and again, we are, they are in Brazil. So I called their CEO and said, hey, look, uh, I'm, you want to help me with this? They said, yeah, sure, let, let's do it. And that's how this whole thing was born. Right? I love it. Uh, and, and you're going yourself then, I reckon. Maybe I am. And, and, and at most remote companies, uh, it's very good for the culture that you meet at least once a year. And we usually do this in Europe because it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a bunch of uh, we have a bunch of people in in uh, in Europe, so it's just cheaper to fly people to Europe. Uh, in, in our case, but uh, we usually do this around April or May. This year, we were considering maybe not doing uh, just out of like we want to be responsible because we know the economic situation is, is really bad. However, it does make a difference. I mean, every time we met before, we could see like that that something very big happened, like big lots of things that as a remote company sometimes are not going well when you meet, like you kind of solve many problems at, at once. Uh, uh, you know, remote has many advantages, but also has some disadvantages. Uh, I personally think both models can work. You just have to be very cognizant about what you're doing. And and again, if you if you and 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 do your best to to patch the disadvantages. Uh, and one way of doing this is just this, you have to meet. So I was already like, look, financially speaking, we shouldn't meet. <laughs> but but on the other hand, like it's not that it's not that this is gonna be like the make or break it for the company, right? It's, it's not mm -hmm. like oh, I, I haven't met this year because of that, I had three more years of runway. Like it's not like that. It's not it's not even a month of runway. So it doesn't it doesn't make a, that much difference. Uh it, it makes it makes a, a very big difference in the culture of the company. And flying everybody to Brazil is is more expensive than uh, than it would be to fly everybody to Europe. But since if if you already have to fly me to Brazil anyway, and we wanted our VP of marketing to come and, and etc., at that point is not that much more expensive nice. to just do the whole yeah. thing there. So and yeah. and so I'm probably going to do this as well. That's neat. That's super nice. Well, uh, you know, safe travels to everyone when the time comes. I hope you have a great time. Thank and you. Got a lot of media around it too. Um, for us to follow. Looking forward to announce the final date. Uh, and for the people in your audience that are from Brazil, uh, look, we would love to have you there, uh, just uh, hanging out with us and learning more about Tursa, learning more about Ozzy and our partner, uh, and interacting with, with the man, the myth, the legend, the primogen. <laughs> Everyone's excited. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for this initiative. It's going to be super cool. And I we, we didn't talk all too much about the open source motion and what the community mm -hmm. has like the contributors and actually perhaps we could couple this with if you'd like you know sharing your screen showing us the repository yeah. and then to transition to a d demo uh, this is our main repository and this is the you know we have the cli which is also open source we have other things that are also open source we have the clients that are also open source but when i when i mentioned earlier like that, that we wanted to fork sqlite uh and and get it going this is what we did like the, there's a project called libsql uh, mm -hmm. and and i wish uh, i wish i had the foresight to just call it Turso. <laughs> uh, or, but but again, Turso, as I explained, did not exist. We we, we kind of did it like to, it, more or less. I'm not going to say an accident, but but almost an accident. Right? Just a, um, so we have LibSQL. Uh, LibSQL. One of our goals was to have, uh, as I said, to be the the open contribution fork of SQLite. Be this thing that people can come and, and build together with us. So the thing that I love the most, like the stars are great. So we have six thousand GitHub stars which is more than SQLite, although uh, I am very cognizant of the fact that SQLite is not developed on GitHub. It has a mirror in GitHub. I think if it was developed on GitHub, it would, be, it would have more, but still a great milestone. Uh, but the thing I am proud the most is just the number of contributors, right? So if you look in here, we have 54 contributors to LibSQL. Uh, some, and we don't have 54 people in this company, I can guarantee you. <laughs> right, so there, there are, uh, as, and, as, as usual with the open source, I mean, you have like your main people doing a lot of work, uh, and here's me, but then you start having like people who have never been with this company, right? And all, all of those, you know, Doug had, Doug was, uh, our previous dev rel, but like lots of those people are just people who are super excited with, with, uh, to contribute to the project, right? And, uh, these contributions can, they come in many ways. They, they, you know, some of them are for the build system. Some of them are for, uh, the core database. Some of them are for the server. So we have contributions, uh, in, in, in many places. Uh, yep. So again, here here you're gonna see uh, all the, the the description of like what is different from between uh, LibSQL and SQLite, uh, and and LibSQL can also be run as SQLite as a pure file, or it has a server that you can connect to, and then you send your SQLite statements to us. All of that is in the same repository. But again, e even if you run as just just SQLite, 
there are a couple of differences right, between LibSQL and SQLite, and they're listed here in terms of feature. Uh, Durso is a service that we manage based on that. So let me, let me just show, you know what, let me just show uh, our website. Sounds good. So I'm gonna come here, durso.tech. Uh, we are, again, we are reviewing a lot of that messaging to uh, focus a lot more on this idea of like a just SQLite. Uh, one, one of the things that we put in front and center now is just the insane amount of databases that we can create. If you come here to our pricing page, you see like uh, we allow people to create up to 10,000 databases uh, already on $29. We're going to have a new plan uh, coming up, uh, hopefully at the end of the quarter, like with more stuff. And you can see like you can do all of the kind of things that are common in databases today. Like you can do database branching. Uh, you can access this from serverless. You can do point in time restore, automatic backups. So all, all of this kind of stuff that you will need to run a production database is done by us. Now, if I share my terminal now, which is here. Right. Uh, so for, first of all, forgive me. I'm not a JavaScript person uh, at all, uh, but I, I know this is the language that the most people are into. Uh, so I wrote uh, by <laughs> copying an internal example here, uh, just an extremely simple, uh, extremely simple example. Mm -hmm. uh, so forgive me for any like non-standard JavaScript stuff here. So you can come, you can come here and like it just creates a client uh, and this is a super stupid example that just sends a query. Select one. Yep. Just And the, the cool thing about it is that you see that there is a DB URI environment variable. And I'm going to do something like this. DB URI equals file uh, SQLite.db. Let me just show you first that this file does not exist here. Uh, all I have here is the index. So if I come here and I do this, uh, and then I do bun because uh, I want to, despite my age, I want to sound and look cool. So I'm going to use bun. <laughs> so you come here and you do index. Uh, you can see that it created the file. You're going to see here that it created a file. Uh, and, and it did select one. Uh, I can come here now and do SQLite 3, SQLite.tb, create table podcasts. New text, insert into podcasts, uh, full. And I could come and replace this with, uh, and then do the same thing, right? Just uh, if I do this now, you would see like the column name and the text and then the values, etc. So we have like, this is all like, again, this is using a file. I'm not talking to Turso. Uh, you don't have to be signed up to Turso. You can, you can just do it. Uh, and this is one of the beautiful things about SQLite. I mean, the driver itself is the database. There is nothing. I haven't set up a database. I haven't put up a server. I have done absolutely nothing. Uh, the database is now part of my code. It's a library. Uh, and I just called it, and, and it's there. Like the database itself is a file. Now, what I can do as well is I can do Turso DB create. I just want to move this out of my way here. Turso DB create. Test. So you're going to see that in actually fairly slowly, uh, there's something uh, most of most database creation should not take that long. It usually takes less than a second. Uh, I just created a new database in Truso, right? So I can I can do the same thing. I can I can come here and then I can do Truso DB shell test. I'm going to create the same table. Create table podcasts name text and i'm gonna do insert into podcasts name values bar right and then i can do a turso db show test and you see that there's a url here right so i mm -hmm. i can use this url just to keep things simple i'm not going to put in the environment variable i'm just going to copy uh, and then again, because this is over HTTP, I also I'm going to need a token, so I can come here and then again, Turso DB tokens create test. So I'm going to get this whole thing here. And I had troubles in the past with the token just not being copied. Uh, 
guess I could put on, on an environment variable, but let's call uh, token. Hopefully this is correct. If you don't have a nice comma like this. And if I just run this again, bun index.ts, you will see that you now contacted this uh, remote database. Uh, and, and, and another thing that is super cool that uh, Tursa can do is they can also replicate the database from our server to your client. Right, so I can I can essentially come here uh, and let's see if the if I, we don't have any demo effect here, but I can, I can just remove that file, uh, rm sqlite.tb, and then I can turn this in, this URL into a sync URL, and just the in the URL I'm gonna say file podcast.tb. And then the first thing I want to do here is you be sync. So it's just super simple. Uh, and hopefully we're actually even going to do away with the need of calling sync explicitly. We want to transform this into a background operation. But once need again, this comma in the URL line, by the way. What's up? Uh, I think we need an extra comma um, in the oh, yeah. URL. Yeah, up top. I, hate, I kind of hate this, by the way. I never <laughs> understood why is it that in JSON you don't have a comma in the last one. But you have, and, and it's not. It's, it's not that you can't have a comma. You must not have a comma. Right. That's exactly. a comma. Nice. So if you see here, right, uh, it runs a bunch of stuff. I mean, just a we go up bar, and you will notice that this file is now here. So this file was created. I can come here and like SQL tree podcast TV, select star from podcasts. This is a local file, right? So uh, you you can now have uh, this will periodic not not the way I wrote because you, you have to the right way is to put the sync call on a background thread uh, and again we want to automate this because it's one of the common complaints that our community has. Uh, but you can you can code it in a way that you're reading from your local file uh, every time. So you're now reading in microseconds, but every change that that happens in the server. Like if you have multiple writers and etc., like or if you have multiple API servers, everything that happens on the server, you 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 replicate your local file, which is again something that lots of people find mind blowing, because you don't have that uh, capability in in standard SQLite. Not to mention, as I said, like uh, we have, you can create 500 databases for free. So you can come here, say create DB2, and there you go another database and DB3. DB4, and you keep creating databases as, as many as you want. Uh, and all of that is, is something that you can create with an API. So you can actually just call an API as well to create the database for you. Uh, so you can, you can have a system uh, where a user logs in, it's a new user, you create a database just for that user, and then the user can do whatever they want with this database. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you manage the schema, and then fair, one, one, thing, one, one of the things we're working on, because we hear a lot from users, okay, but what if I want to evolve the schema of all of those databases at the same time. But there are many scenarios in which uh, the user now, uh, again, you were, you were controlling the schema only because you didn't want users messing up with each other's database. But there are many good scenarios in which, since, since I have a database per user anyway, just let the user do SQL, let the user control the schema, let the user do whatever they want. Right, so you can, have a, you can have a situation like that where you have like, thousands of, we support millions of databases uh, in, in the system itself. So you, you can create like a database per tenant, a database per session. You can, you, you can create a database in less than a second. You can delete a database in less than a second. So those things can be very ephemeral. I can, I can come and show you a little bit more of the CLI. Thurso uh, DB list is gonna show me a list of all of my databases. And then as I said, like uh, just uh, uh, you can have as many of them as you want. Uh, and and we have a we have a web interface as well. That if if you go to torso.tech slash app, uh, you have uh, your visual management of the databases over there. Uh, so this is Torso. Awesome. All, all of, thank you so much for walking us through Torso. And like all of this was super amazing, super cool. I especially like how flexible um, the database is since it's just a file. You can have it on the local device, on the remote, on the edge. Mm -hmm. And you can replicate stuff like very easily because of these uh, features. Love it. That that was the plan. <laughs> awesome. Awesome, folks. It was a, it was a pleasure uh, being with you. 
Thank you so much Thank for making so the time. Yeah. This was awesome. Really appreciate it. Well, Thanks, any, any parting any parting words? Any anything you want to say? Just to, anything from, I from should you? say? <laughs> yeah. Like any advice for other founders or uh, open source maintainers? Um, last words from you. Gosh, advice. <laughs> advice for other founders. I hate advice, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hate advice because you you know you ask ten people and you hear twelve opinions and, and then True. like the the most challenging thing with advice is you know picking which of them you, you you're gonna listen to. Uh but and and again if you if you know if you if you're skilled enough to figure out which one you're gonna listen to, maybe you don't need the advice in, in the first place. Uh but but there are like a I don't know from from a couple of things I think I wish I had done differently. Um, I I wish uh, I we you know as I said uh, although I don't I don't see how we would have done it in, in the situation that we had with the constraints that we had and all that. I think I wish I spent more time in the beginning understanding like what is the real power of a SQLite based system that users want versus just going straight into the edge thing because and but then again it's a we put uh, when we launched our private beta, we put a form out and uh, and ask people like, uh, "What what are you interested?" in? And a lot of those people said Edge, right? But but we so so for us it was like, yeah, sure, you know, we have validation. But I think uh, I, today after the the experience that I had with this startup and you know, founding my first startup, I don't understand the word validation this, the the same way I used to. Uh, validation. Uh, the way I understood was just something like the hey, this person said this is cool. Like uh, I had a bunch of a bunch of users saying this and that. This is I don't consider this validation today. Like validation is something a lot stronger than that, right? The the, the real validation doesn't come until someone signs the check. Mm -hmm. uh, so 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 uh, I wish I had spent more time. And first of all, I wish I I I I knew this more in in a, in a more internalized way as I as I know today. But in hindsight, I wish I, I had spent more time in this process of real validation. So I think one advice that I have for founders is to just spend more time in 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 that process. Um, and and look for for open source. I don't know, man. Open source is very different than than what it used to be. Again, when I back in my days, like boomer. Uh, okay, boomer. Uh, op open source was like a we we understood open source, especially Pack and I, as like this Linux thing where you where you want to build the community with lots of people with different interests, like creating a shared product. And open source today is not like that at all. And and like the we we actually try that. Uh, and we, we we even after we found the Turso. We had this internal rule that like LibSQL never mentions Turso. We want to create and foster LibSQL as like this open community for everybody without us controlling. But turns out people do not like that. Uh, again, back back in my days, like this would be radioactive for for an open source project. But today, I think we have a lot more of like single company open source projects. You look at projects like Call.com and and other things like that. I mean, there is a company. That is that is releasing that code for open source for a variety of reasons. Uh, when I was, you know, back in my days, uh, this was very uncommon and and distrusted. Like uh, mm -hmm. for something to be truly open source, you wanted to have a community like GNOME or KDE or Linux or stuff like that, like or GCC, where where you don't have a entity controlling it. At most, you have a foundation. Uh, but you have this idea that like uh, lots of people are building bi different businesses, different competing businesses on top of this foundation. This is much harder to do today. I don't even know if it's possible, to be honest. Uh, the, the incentives are so that like uh, anybody releases an open source project moderately successful, uh, you know, a company is born a year later. So, so it's very hard, I think, to to do this today. It's a, it's a different world, uh, maybe. I don't know if I have any good advice. This is more of a rant than than advice, but uh, registered. Mm -hmm. no, also, again, it's, it wasn't even a rant. It was just like a statement of fact of the State of the Union. Just it is what it is, just the, with advantages and disadvantages. No, it's super interesting to hear that. And I guess the last note I could add is don't be afraid to pivot, right? Hearing your story and pivot again. 
uh, update your assumptions since we're doing, you know, and, and do it do it as early do it as early as you can. And, and again, even if I if I knew uh, if I knew what I know now, as I said, internalize because knowing is a diff, it's a complicated word. What does it mean to know? You guys are Greek, so you've been asking this question yourselves for two thousand years, right? What does it mean to know? Uh, right, uh, Plato had uh, his shots and, and others as well, but like it's it's a hard question. Uh, I knew, like you know, you can pivot, and I knew the validation, etc. But now I know in a different way right? because I've been I've, I've been through the process. Uh, and and again, I I think uh, I would have pivoted sooner. And and the fun thing is that when we when we started our previous product, the one of the first things we did was to launch. Uh, a distributed database uh, uh, that we use internally, but we put it as open source, uh, a small distributed uh, database based on SQLite. And we got more traction on that than for a long time, that repository had more stars than our main repository. But we kept telling ourselves that, oh no, the strategy is to create the API first, and, cetera, and then the strategy is this and the strategy is that, and the strategy is that. Uh, so again, I think we had uh, I think we had early signs that uh, that the SQLite stuff that we were doing and planning to do was more interesting than the product itself. So I th I wish that we had went to that direction earlier because then we would not have spent that much money, you know, all, all, all of that. But you know, just uh, so so maybe one advice is like if you have something like this, try try to it, it all boils down to validation. Like just just to try to learn to validate those things really well. Uh, and understand what that means and understand that. So, so if you have to abandon something, because we also had validation points for the previous product, but they were much weaker. Like they, they were like, oh, you know, there is there is like there is activity, the great growth of GitHub stars and, and et cetera. Uh, but we never had a paying customer, for example. Right? We never we never had any of that uh, after after one year with, with Tursa. We had paying customers as soon as we released the, 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 the plan. Uh, so, so like the, 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 just what it means to validate and be very mindful of that and you know, don't be afraid of uh, moving the direction that the validation takes you.